In this video, we're gonna explore the northwestern part of Turkey. The region is blessed with breathtaking landscapes, historical treasures, and a vibrant cultural heritage. We'll pass by the city of Bursa, get a glimpse of the Kapidak Peninsula and the Sea of Marmara, cross the Dardanelles over the longest suspension bridge in the world, travel around the Gallipoli Peninsula, take a ferry to Çanakkale and visit the famous historical site of the city of Troy. Bursa is home to a natural wonder uh, that has captured the imagination of locals and visitors alike. The famous platanus tree known as the Old Plain Tree of Bursa. The tree is believed to be over 600 years old and has witnessed the evolution of the city around it. Underneath the platanus tree, locals gather and engage in lovely conversations and sip traditional Turkish tea. I didn't know they can get this big, uh -huh. okay. so they, they had to put like uh, metal rods to keep it All right, the age of this tree is 610 years uh, and the total height uh, would be 37 meters and the diameter crown diameter, oh, no, crown diameter mm -hmm. uh, 53 meters and the circumference 10, ten meters. We arrived to a place called Turan, which is a village on the peninsula we are currently on. So it seems to be something like a fisherman village, but in fact it looks more like a boat cemetery. <laughs> yeah, I like those tiny boats, they're so cute. Just look at them. And the second thing they do here is uh, they grow olives. Uh, almost the whole peninsula is covered with olive trees and olive groves. Have a look. So this is the Sea of Marmara. And uh, Istanbul is somewhere this way. Guys, we are heading to Çanakkale now and we were passing by those things look at that never it's seen those up close yeah this is the first time i could get this close to one of them because they are everywhere around turkey but they usually place them on top of hills or on mountain ranges which is not so easily reachable We reached the Dardanelles Strait, which connects the Sea of Marmara with the Aegean Sea and gives a path to the Mediterranean. And uh, here you can see there is a ferry boat that can take you basically all over the Sea of Marmara and uh, to Istanbul, first of all. And on this side there is a bridge. We're gonna cross it and go to that peninsula and see the Aegean Sea. 
Today, there are two ways of crossing the Dardanelles Strait if you're traveling by car, taking a ferry or have a breathtaking ride over the 1915 Chanakkale Bridge. That bridge wasn't built in 1915, it's just its name. The bridge is a toll road and was opened in March of 2022 after almost five years of construction. It is the longest suspension bridge in the world with a main span of 2000 meters. The total length of the the bridge is 3500 meters and the height of the bridge's two towers is over 300 meters. We finally reached the Aegean Sea and uh, Greece is somewhere in this direction. And in this direction there's a beach called Eggs Beat. British war. were fighting against Turkish people and uh, and they landed right over there. This is the part of Turkey where the Dardanelles Strait meets the Aegean Sea. I'm not, not sure if you can see but there is a line of cargo ships moving towards the Mediterranean. The Gallipoli Peninsula and the Dardanelles Strait is a place of profound historical significance marked by the Battle of Gallipoli during World War I. In honor and memory of the units and ships which fought on Gallipoli or in the Dardanelles and of these 20,504 British sailors and soldiers and 248 Australian soldiers who fell in this neighborhood in 1914-1916 and have no known graves. This picturesque region with its rugged coastline, serene beaches and rolling hills witnessed one of the most intense and devastating military campaigns of the 20th century. Incredible, incredible loss of lives. And I don't know, you tell me, was it worse? The Battle of Gallipoli fought between April 25th 1915 and January 9, 1916, was a joint offensive launched by the Allied forces, primarily composed of troops from Australia, New Zealand, Britain, France and India against the Ottoman Empire. The objective was to secure control of the Dardanelles Strait and ultimately capture Constantinople, now Istanbul, a move that would have significantly altered the course of the war. The Ottoman troops, led by the skilled military commander Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, displayed remarkable resilience and eventually, in early 1916, the Allied forces were evacuated from the peninsula, ending the campaign in a strategic withdrawal. Today, the Gallipoli Peninsula is a memorial to the soldiers who fought and perished during the campaign. So at the bottom of the monument they have those chains. Does anyone know what they are for? Yeah, because it seems like there is excessive water coming out of the monument <laughs> and I can see salt all over the chain. Good morning from the Dardanelles, guys. So we arrived to see a fortress, one of those that were used to protect the Dardanelles Strait. And uh, this one looks pretty renovated. And there is another one. Right across. Yeah, right across the opposite side of the strait. Uh, they were used to prevent uh, invaders. And it's uh, more like for controlling the area. Uh, these two fortresses are not the only ones, uh, they have a downstream, yeah. a couple of more, upstream, two more, but uh, these two are the most preserved ones. This is what it looks uh, from up above. Uh, that thing I'm showing you, it's that over there. 
yeah as you can see three towers together and uh, another one right in the middle of it and uh, as you can see it was observing all of the straight there are some old structures which were left and I think these were uh, actually original uh, sort of buildings put in place so people could live here, sleep and uh, store uh, supplies of sorts. This looks original, but uh, everything else around here uh, looks very newish. There is actually a way inside of the fortress. Uh, they have three round structures which make up a wall and uh, right in the middle there is a tower. This one would be hardcore to penetrate. This guy standing here is Piris, obviously, who was an Ottoman uh, sailor, navigator, explorer in the 15th century, 15th and 16th centuries. And they have um, a lot of streets and uh, points and hotels named after Piris here. This guy is legit, um, maps and everything. Yeah, so I think it is him. Ah, he was tall. All right, right at the ferry and um, automobile to cross the strait is 125 liters and we are waiting in line to get on the boat. It has just arrived from the other side of the strait, so we have first to wait uh, while people in cars Yeah, We literally the second, yeah, the second in line. Chanakali, which is situated on the southern coast of the Dardanelles Strait, is a gateway to both Asia and Europe. This strategically significant city has witnessed countless civilizations, battles and historical events throughout the ages. It is here that the legendary city of Troy, immortalized in Homer's epic poems, stands as a testament to the region's rich history. They made it of steel and fiberglass. Oh, yes. Wow! And uh, they used this this horse for a movie. Uh, it was uh, 2004 Troy. And the story behind this horse is actually that there was a city called Troy. The Trojan War. It was lasting for almost a decade, and uh, even eventually, Greeks. Yeah. Uh, pretend that they were retreating. I think they uh, left a horse behind, a wooden horse, uh, in which a raiding party was concealed. And when, when people of Troy, they brought this horse to their city, uh, those guys who were inside of the horse, they opened the gates of Troy and let their army in. Yeah. And there, therefore, the city was seized uh, men were killed and women were taken away. Yeah, but like, you know, at the same time, you got to take the story with a grain of salt, because uh, yeah. nobody actually knows if it actually happened. Yeah. It's more like a myth. Interesting thing here uh, at uh, Chanakale, at the Naval Museum, they charge 200 lira for the access to the fortress. And uh, also, they have a couple of ships here uh, in the territory. Yeah, also, <laughs> if you use a professional camera here, yeah. it's gonna cost you extra 160 liters. And by professional, they mean um, any, any DSLR camera or looking like a DSLR cam camera. And a GoPro. <laughs> GoPro, So yeah, they that's why. made us put uh, 
our photo camera and GoPro in the safety box. Yeah, it is ridiculous. <laughs> our phones uh, make just as, as the same quality uh, shots, yeah, and videos. shots and videos. Uh, all the controls are here. This is the thing where you tell um, the mechanic or whoever uh, to, to go faster. It's in Arabic. You can definitely tell it's uh, an old tag because uh, you still have all these manual controls. Uh, this box was added afterwards. It's like it's not the original part of the ship, I don't think. Um, yeah, and those vans, this is definitely an old tech. And all right, as promised, we got to the other shore of the strait, and now we're at the Naval Museum and there is Another forest right across it. And could just release three torpedoes at the time. 1931. That one thing is a periscope. Uh, they put those uh, in submarines to see what's what's around. Any seagulls? Uh, it's actually functional. Really? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not joking. Wanna, wanna have a look? Yeah, yeah, just across the strait. It's kind of cool. This is remains of the UB-46 submarine. The air of launch of it was 1915. Yeah, even though it looks big, kind of big, but it is puny for, for a submarine. It is a small one, very small. And uh, nothing left inside. You know, normally there would be like sections where you could walk, uh, you know, piping, uh, and that's the, sh the shell just what's left. Yeah, and this is the second fortress uh, we told you about, uh, which was right across the strait. And uh, from this point, uh, you actually can visit, because you can see the second one right there, where the ship is passing by. Wait for it, wait for it, yeah. Um, yes, after, you, you can see it now. The second fortress is right there. And all this stuff they put in here, it is actually from the uh, World War I. Uh, all of these guns, machine guns, uh, yeah, that, that's what they would use back in 1915, 1916s, to fight, fight off the British. And those guns are not actually Turkish made, they are German guns, French guns, and uh, uh, maybe some British guns also, but uh, we don't see a single one of a Turkish origin. Russian mortar from 1895. Whoa. What does it say? This is car 59. Uh, what is that? This is some car. Yeah, I don't know. Something without the lock. Even though it is from 1895, 
uh, but we still can tell what those writings mean on the gun. So these guns were built in 1892 and came originally from a German ship which was sold to Turkey and uh, uh, they placed them here on the hill to observe the strait. Let's see if we can get inside. Oh, we can. We actually can. There's a barrel. Not functioning, of course. Concrete foundation, it could rotate. Two cannons. It's kind of cool. Steel, you can see gears exposed. It's interesting how it's not rusty. I mean, a little bit, but... So in order to give you a visual reference how big these guns are, it's like it doesn't look like a big gun, but uh, let's see if my head actually fits in here. See? And we could a bit, a bit another fist in it. So basically, you would need a lot a lot bigger head to, to be able to actually fire it. All right, here in the city of Troy, of course you can see the Trojan horse, that one. I mean, of course it's not the original, of course, but uh, yeah, but it's kind of cool to see a symbol of uh, all computer viruses right here. So the wire is kind of, you know, wires comes in like inside, hides in somewhere, and, uh, yeah. and then goes and goes out and uh, penetrates your system. <laughs> All named after this horse. It's actually too bad it's on reconstruction now. The ancient city of Troy, which dates back over 3,000 years, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most important archaeological sites in the world. It is believed to be the place where the Trojan War, as described in Homer's Iliad, took place. Exploring the ruins of Troy is like digging into the pages of ancient mythology as you walk through the remnants of ancient city walls, palaces and temples. Normally, the famous wooden horse, an iconic symbol of the Trojan war meets visitors at the entrance attracting people and showing its historical significance yeah that concludes our trip to troy yeah. and yeah even though i was a little disappointed vicky was just expecting what you see all around yeah, that's what what i was expecting to see just rocks and not much left because it was so many years ago like centuries yeah, yeah. And it was many times built, destroyed, built and destroyed. Different people coming around, destroying everything to the ground, leveling. So they had to dig up uh, like six layers. Yeah. Uh, eight. Eight, eight. Eight layers. Eight oh man, layers. So eight layers. Yeah, you cannot, cannot see uh, much of it. And I think uh, in between those re restorations, like rebuildings and uh, times when it was destroyed there were also like robbers, it was looted many times so even though something uh, has remained, I mean some valuable things, they are now in museums all over the world because for example during the world wars uh, treasures, part of treasures were just brought to other countries 